This may be one of my favorite stories of the past year. Um, I was listening to a Dateline. I love the Dateline podcasts, the crime pro- podcast, and they'd made reference to this podcast. They had a woman on on to talk about the case who had done a podcast herself, a BBC journalist, and her podcast was I Am Not Nicholas. And it was nine episodes long, and it was about this guy who, for these purposes, I'll just call Nicholas Rossi. Though that's not really his name. He's got a different name. He's got a lot of different names. I don't know where to begin on the number of names he's got. It's Nicholas Oliverdian, but then he changed it to Nicholas Rossi. But now he's going by Arthur Knight, and he claims he's not either one of those other people and never has been. So this guy grows up in like the foster care system and goes from house to house and winds up sort of making something of his life, but had problems as a kid. And his, I think it's his now ex-stepfather speaks out about him and says he's evil. Anyway, he gets into like local politics and he starts getting on the stump and people are like, oh, wow, this kid's got a real future. He could be like a spokesperson for kids who have been unhoused and so on. Well, he went a different way. One thing led to another. He got in trouble after trouble, like minor things, and it sort of escalates into alleged sexual assaults. The name changing starts, yada, yada, yada. You got to listen to the whole podcast. In 2000, I think it was, was it 2000 or was that too long ago? 2020, sorry, 2020, he faked his own death. <laughs> he came out with an article in 2019 saying he had stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He told his friends he was dying. An obituary appeared online for him in early 2020 saying he had in fact died and his ashes had been scattered at sea. All those people back at like the, in the local politics and the state house, they were all like giving tributes. It's so sad. He was such a gunner. He had a great career ahead of him in politics. Can't believe he's dead. And in this podcast with this woman, I am not Nicholas, they have, there's an interview with a priest that allegedly spoke to his like widow or his whatever, who's like, he died. I need you to give this beautiful tribute to him. And he was about to do it when the feds contacted him and said, we don't think he's dead. <laughs> the priest was like, I'm out. Okay, this is just a by way of background. So then he, it turns out he moved. These are the allegations. He denies this. It turns out he moved to Scotland. He changed his appearance somewhat. He starts using an oxygen mask to, to mask his identity. He's in a wheelchair and Dateline catches up with him. Andrea Canning got an interview with him. He's now going by Arthur Knight. Arthur Knight, he says he's Irish, but he's living in Scotland. He's trying to speak in an English accent with an Irish lilt. It's amazing. And she's like, are you Nicholas Rossi? You're Nicholas Rossi, aren't you? And he's pretending, I believe, and these are the allegations, that he's not that he's this British guy who's like Sir Arthur Knight and in a wheelchair and can't and has the oxygen and can't move. And there's a clip of him with Andrew Canning that you can't make up. Watch this. We were once a normal family, but thanks to the media, our lives have been interrupted. And we'd like privacy, and I would like to go back to being a normal husband. But I, I can't, because I can't breathe. I can't walk. Uh, people say, that's an act. Let me try to stand up. Let me try to stand up. Exactly. Exactly. What do you say to, to someone who believes that, that you are Nicholas Oliverdian? I am not Andrea. I am not Nicholas Oliverdian. I do not know how to make this clear. What do you say to people who say these are crocodile tears He's putting on a show. This is all an act. <laughs> oh, he co- Andrew, no, that's, that's a low blow. That's a right low blow. <laughs> now, I love this story so much. Okay, I'm about to talk. I'm about to toss it to you guys, but just to put the pin on the end of it. Turns out, a court in Scotland said you are Nicholas Rossi or Nicholas Oliverdian. You're going back home to Utah to face sexual assault and rape charges that have been made against you, which appear to have been the reason for the whole identity shift 
and him fleeing the country in the first place. So he gets sent back this month. He just got back. He's in Utah and he appeared in court on Tuesday in a scene. You just, you're never going to see this again in your life. Here it is. Here's a bit in court. My name is Arthur Six. Mike Brain. My date of birth is 22nd of the 11th, 1986. Your Honor, Tamara for the state. Um, this individual has been extradited um, and he has not admitted his name or dearth, birth date accurately. And so I don't Objection, think we're going to be lady. successful on that today Objection, either. Objection, my lady. That is complete hearsay. <laughs> and I would ask <laughs> it, your ladyship that the prosecution <laughs> to cause for what? <laughs> my lady. <laughs> <laughs> Jana, you tell oh. me what, what challenges it poses when you're going after a guy who won't even admit he is the defendant who allegedly committed the crime. You know who's going to have the biggest challenge is his lawyer. I mean, holy cow. Like, either this guy is unbelievably insane, which may or may not be a defense to what he's ac accused of doing, or but when you have a client or a defendant who won't even, who's got 18 different personas and you don't know which one you're representing, <laughs> it, it is a challenge. And the and the sad part, of uh, many sad parts, but, you know, he's accused of some heinous crimes that he might have had a defense to had he not created this, this concoction uh, that, he, that he was dead. Like, he could have maybe legitimately defended himself, but now he's so far out there. I don't know if he's even competent to stand trial. This is this is absolutely nuts. I feel sorry for his attorney more than I feel sorry for the prosecutor in this case. I oh, boy, love this story. I, I hate the crimes of which he's accused, but I just love how what how farcical the whole thing is. Mark, he is he won't admit that it's him. And even in this uh, documentary or this podcast by this BBC journalist, I am not Nicholas. She writes about how she went to his house. He was in, in that interview with Andrea Canning is sitting next to his wife. He found somebody to marry him. And um, that's one of the most shocking things. And uh, th that this guy, Nicholas, and his wife invite the BBC journalist over to their house in Scotland. And the, the real Nicholas Rossi or Aliverdian has tattoos all up and down the one arm. So she goes in there, she knows it, she's looking at his arm and it's bare as a baby's bottom. And she's like, can I see the arm? You know, and he's like, sure. So she, he shows her the arm, nothing, nothing. She's like, geez, I guess it's not him. Cause he's, you know, the real guy doesn't have a British accent, even a crappy one and isn't with the oxygen tank and all this. And she left being like, lo and behold, you know, I guess it's not him. I don't know how he did it. If, he, if it looks like he had tattoo removal. So he's really going to contest identity and maybe, maybe, maybe plan B mark is what Jonna just said, which is I am too to even sit here for this trial. You know, as a as a undercover Armenian without the IAN on the end, I'm fascinated by the fact that his last name, or at least who they claim he is, is Alaverdian, which is an Armenian name. And I think that's his real no, last name. That's his birth yeah, name. Yeah, which supposedly is his real last name. He doesn't seem to, if you could uh, take a look at somebody, although it's tough to tell uh, behind the skin. He, he's either, I, I, I'm i with Johnny, he's either clinically insane uh, or one of the worst Saturday Night Live skits I've ever seen in my life. He's it, not, I disagree. Just, He's not insane. He's just a criminal. That's my opinion. He, I believe he committed these crimes and now he's just doing whatever he can to, to evade the law. So as a legal matter, what do you do? If you're the judge, you know, they, they already found in Scotland that he is Nicholas Alaverdian slash Rossi, that he, he is not Sir Arthur Knight or whatever he's calling himself. Isn't that ball game, John? I mean, what do you do if you're the judge when he just refuses to acknowledge it, but you all know what the truth is. The judge actually has the easy job. And again, I hate to sound selfish. Imagine representing him when you can't say to a judge, <laughs> no, my client really is who you think he is, because you're not allowed to say that. You have to address your client as whatever, you know, he could 
uh, Mary had a little lamb, if that's who he says he is. That's how you have to address your client. So it's going to be very, very tough for a person to represent him competently when he is so nuts that you don't even know who he is exactly, even though you are charged with the duty of but keeping him out of jail. But not clinically nuts. Not clinically, not yeah, legally not nuts. Clinically he's, nuts. I don't think he's nuts. Right. He's cunning. He's a terrible actor, but he's cunning and he's putting on a show to try to avoid responsibility here. I don't well, know. So Mark, thing, literally, what do they do? They have a trial well, the, just saying, okay, he. if you're the prosecutor, you say he, he's claiming he's not. A judge has already found he is. I'm going to proceed in this case in front of you and I ask you to do the same as though I have the right man. I'll prove that to you with the Scottish court's finding. But I, whether he wants to engage in this or not, here we go. A man named Nicholas Rossi, who I'm telling you is sitting right there, raped this girl and sexually assaulted another. Let's go. Well, the first, I don't think that the Scottish finding is going to be binding here. They'll probably have to redo the entire uh, process. If he's not admitting to who he is and the identity, there's a couple of different ways that the defense will probably play this. Number one is they may, at least initially, uh, depending on what evidence is accessible to the uh, lawyer, they could either challenge competency to begin with, or they could still go down the road of the identity. I mean, there is a, you know, at at some point they may have to do a DNA, and they may have to do they something. They did a else DNA in Scotland. Why shouldn't that be yeah, the but end of the I don't know that it's necessarily you a, a foreign kind of a foreign determination of a foreign court is not necessarily going to be binding here in the U.S. Let me tell you a story about a guy named Leo Grillo. Leo was on a road trip and came across a Doberman. This dog was severely underweight and clearly in trouble, and Leo rescued him and named him Delta. Sadly, as you know, Delta is just one of so many animals that needed and continue to need help. And that inspired Leo to start Delta Rescue, the largest no-kill, that's important to listen for, care for life animal sanctuary in the world. They have rescued thousands of dogs, cats, and horses from the wilderness, and they provide their animals with shelter, love, safety, and a home. It's dedication and everlasting love to animals. That's Leo's mission and his legacy. Delta Rescue relies solely on contributions to stay open, and if you would like caring for these animals to be part of your legacy, speak with your estate planner because there are tax-saving estate planning benefits to you as well. You can grow your estate while letting your love for animals live well into the future. Check out the estate planning tab on their website to learn more and speak with your advisor. We call dog a man's best friend for a reason. You can help those who need it most. Visit deltarescue.org today to learn more. That's deltarescue.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.